Hi guys, and welcome to week two of our broiler project. In case you missed it, I am Katie with Townline Poultry Farm, and last week we started an eight week project starting meat birds from one day old baby chicks. And we're gonna uh, check in with you every week through the eight weeks to kind of go over our tips, tricks, advice, and kind of just how to raise meat birds. So today we're gonna go over the changes that have taken place in the last seven days um, and any adjustments that need to be made to accommodate your meat bird scrubs. Uh, first thing is always gonna be temperature. I always go over the temperature because it is the most important factor when you're starting baby chicks. It's, it's gonna be the biggest mistake uh, that people make when trying it the first time. So since they are at seven days, we have our thermometer here, which is reading between 95 and 100. And at seven days, it needs to drop down just a little bit. Um, 90 degrees is typically suggested. And the way to do that, there's a couple ways that you can do that. Um, you can raise the heat lamp and or expand their brooder space so that they have more area to get away from the heat. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and raise our heat lamp. And since I'm a little vertically challenged, John's gonna help me with that. <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah, just raise it about four inches. So about four inches should be sufficient, but always check your thermometer to make sure that you didn't uh, over, over raise it, or you know, that it's not gonna be too cold for the chicks. Um, so we also did expand our space just a little bit. You can uh, see that the meat birds are getting large. I mean, they're quite a bit larger than they were seven days ago. It's pretty amazing how fast they grow. We have about 25 square feet right now. We, we increased it by about a half square foot per chick. Um, now keep in mind when we're talking about temperature, keep in mind where you live, your climate is gonna make a difference. I've had many, many people ask me if they need, extra heat so, uh, need an extra heat source because it's 90 degrees where they live. I understand that that can seem confusing, but 90 degrees does not, um, or it does not stay stable at 90 degrees e overnight. It's better to err on the side of having an extra heat source versus not, so that they can get warm if it starts to cool off. Uh, also keep in mind where your brooder is set up. Our barn in here is at about 65 degrees. So one heat lamp in here is sufficient. If it were 30 degrees in this barn, we would need more heat for these chicks so that their entire brooder space is warm enough. Still, again, with the ability to get away from the heat should they get too hot. So it's just a couple things to take into consideration when determining uh, the temperature. One of the biggest things you will want to look at um, because circumstances can vary so much, uh, where you live or what your setup is, is their behavior that is going to be the best gauge to determine if your chicks are happy. Um, they should be milling around, they should be eating and drinking, um, you know, they just should seem comfortable. Odd behaviors would, would include crowding under the light or against the walls or if they were very weak or um, not eating or drinking. Those can all indicate that there's an issue and we're more than happy to help. You can always give us a call to help narrow down what may be going on. So there's a very scientific term us poultry farmers use called pacey butt. And at week one is about when you would start to notice it. What it is, is it's a dried up clump of droppings that has gotten stuck to a chick's back end. And it typically will indicate that your temperature is a little too high. I know I keep reiterating warmer than colder, but if you start seeing pasted up hind, hind ends or pasty butt, uh, then your temperature is probably a little bit too warm. So if you found a chick with a pasted up hind end, which would look like just a dropping stuck, stuck to the backside of it, uh, you would just want to take some warm water and a washcloth and gently remove it so to, uh, to prevent any further blockage for the baby chick. And then decrease your temperature. Another thing you may notice as they are growing is meat birds can be a bit lazy. They lay around quite a bit and that is normal. So long as they are not lethargic, weak, um, as long as they're eating and drinking, um, they're, they're fine. They just, they like to lay around. They're kind of lazy, fast growing chickens. <laughs> so you should have noticed in the last seven days that baby chicks eat a lot and they drink even more. Our 50 meat birds have been going through about one to two gallons of water per day. 
continuous water never changes throughout the eight weeks. You will always wanna make sure that they have fresh, clean water supply. And the quantity of water that they drink is only gonna increase throughout the eight weeks. Another important thing with the water is to make sure that it is fresh and clean. Um, we recommend checking it at least once a day, if not more. Um, and I wanted to show kind of what happens after a while with the chicks milling about to their waterers and what you should do to it. So if you take a look here, you can see that our waterer has quite a bit of shavings debris in it it's from the chicks walking around. So it's important to either, you, know, you can scoop it out, um, but really this water is kind of dirty and the level's low. So it's, it's really not bad to just toss the old water out altogether and replace it with fresh. That way they have continuous access to fresh water. If you were to ever notice that a waterer is completely dry, you more than likely need more waterers. Better to have more waterers than you would actually need for the quantity of chicks you're raising versus letting one get dry. Dehydration is also pretty critical when starting baby chicks. As a basic rule of thumb, meat birds will consume about twice the amount of water as they do feed and they eat a lot of feed. The feeding schedule at week two remains the same as well. You uh, supply continuous feed for the next week. The feeding schedule does change at week three. Tune in next week for our week three episode to find out what feeding schedule we recommend and why it is so important uh, at, that develop, at that stage of a meat bird development. So I mentioned on week one that it's important to buy the type of feed specifically for the type of poultry that you're raising, and I should have gone into a little bit more detail with that. So broilers have a different feed because of their fast growing bodies. They grow much more quickly than an egg layer would. Uh, the most important difference is gonna be the protein level. Broiler starter feed is typically at 22, 23% protein. And when you're shopping for feed, if you're not sure what you're looking at or what you're looking for, make sure you ask um, either the farm store or the feed mill that you're purchasing it from. They should have a, a different type of feed available for you for raising meat birds. So in the first seven days, you'll notice that your baby chicks eat quite a bit. And one of the most frequently asked questions I get about meat birds is how much do they eat? As a general rule, you can expect to go through about 25 pounds of feed per eight pound bird of live weight. Um, so for instance, if you're raising 10 meat birds, you can anticipate or safely gauge that you will need about 250 pounds of feed to get that bird up to eight pounds of live weight. If you are raising meat birds, that means they are going to need to be processed at some point. And I actually recommend contacting your processor before ordering your baby chicks. They tend to book up quite fast. Custom butchering is um, kind of a special niche and they can tend to book up very fast, especially in the summer months. So make sure you contact your, your processor, know what dates they have available for butchering, and then count backwards to when you wanna start your baby chicks. And there are different ages at which um, you can have your chicks butchered at, and we can talk on that later. Depends on if you want a smaller bird for cooking or a larger bird or some of both. There's a few different ways that we can, uh, or that you, can raise your meat birds to get the, out, uh, the desired outcome. Thanks for joining us for week two. Make sure to like and subscribe to continue following us on our eight week journey. And we're excited to see you next week.